Hello guys, Star is saying and welcoming you to another episode of Face Cam with Jen. And I think this is what we're just going to be calling these, whether it's updates, I start talking about a subject, anything along those lines. So, I did say in the last Face Cam that this one was going to be a little bit more serious because, well, today is, actually I don't know the date of today, so let's grab that. Oh, the Tuesday, November 25th. I knew it was a Tuesday and I knew it's November, but dates I've lost track of for a little bit because it doesn't matter what date anything is until I get back to the first, which is next Monday. Because that's when classes start back up. So, yeah, if any of you people on the national level, and probably the world level, but I know most of my viewers are American, so... If any of you paid attention to the news at all from about... I'd say about, mm, what have been, 8 o'clock central time, so 9 central to what it would be 6 central? Not 6 central, 6 specific time zones. I should know them a little better. But yeah, the decision about indicting Darren Wilson basically said they weren't going to indict him. And I pretty much figured when Governor Nixon declared... Ferguson a stated emergency a week ago that they probably weren't going to indict him. And I had stated a couple times in the past that I said if they don't indict Darren Wilson, the people of Ferguson are going to make what they did in August look like child's play. And that's what they did. They burned down a lot of businesses. Some local and some where there are more locations than what Ferguson is. About a lot of cars, since they did burn a car lot. Um, a few people ended up shot. And this was going on even as I went to bed at 3 in the morning. And it's like, I've been up since 11.30 this morning. So yeah, well, that's kind of enough sleep, I guess. But it's. 11.40 local time, and sun sets in about three more hours, and maybe it'll be another half hour past that till dark. After that, everything's going to be shutting down, but, but everything with all this is basically, because of all the torches and burnings, it's not just Ferguson that's going to be affected because of this. It's going to have all this ripple effect, and it starts with what happened in Ferguson. Businesses all, the businesses that burned, and, I mean, you probably have at least 50 families, 50 people who have lost their jobs because they were in local business, or they're going to say, screw it, we don't need you, and we're not going to relocate you to another location. So you have 50, probably about at least 50 people, maybe even closer to 100, without a job. And as you know, this is Thanksgiving week. So, these people will probably get enough to, you know, celebrate Thanksgiving. But how many of these people who just now lost their jobs overnight because where they worked burned down to the ground can no longer, will not have the chance to celebrate Christmas with their family? How many of these people were single parents with a few children that they were trying to get people, get people for Christmas, get, tried to provide their family, and now they're jobless. They're without a job, and they tried so hard. Ferguson is not a very rich, vast area where everybody has a stable working condition. It's not that. It's actually one of the more worst areas in in the area. Like, neighboring Ferguson and Hazelwood I definitely know is better. Berkeley may or may not be. And outside of those, it just kind of gets like, it's more vastly richer for the most part. Especially if you go across the river to St. Charles. But the thing is, the ripple effect is going to be an effect. Because I heard about as much as 
fourth of the businesses down on West Florissant went up in flames. You're going to have people who probably gave them one chance to not screw it up. And now their business is gone and they're not going to rebuild. There are going to be people who still have their business standing saying, we're not going to stay here. We're going to relocate. We're not staying. We're not keeping our business in Ferguson. We're going to move. Five years from now, we may be asking, hey, you remember what happened to Ferguson? Yeah, that no longer exists. Or it's so much of a run-down place, nobody outside of the city wants to go there unless they absolutely have to. And this is terrible. You can't just... I don't know what to make of all of this because this was so much destruction that hit extremely close to home. Like, if you remember me saying in the first Mike Brown video I did back in August, I said I was pr I'm fairly close, fairly close to Ferguson. I have friends in I have friends who live in Ferguson, who work in Ferguson, who go to Ferguson for business, for shopping and business. And that is probably all going to change because of what happened last night and early this morning. And I don't know I, it frustrates me a whole lot. It makes me sad. And heck, last night I was just feeling all sorts of numb. Because I don't know what to feel. I still don't know what to feel. Because there's, there's no way to describe the feeling of Watching some place that you've gone to or you live in and watching it go up in flames. Watching it be destroyed. Watching everything that you have tried to keep all maintained and built up be in shambles. I really don't know what to make of this. That's the fact that the people of Ferguson, St. Louis County, the city of St. Louis, the state of Missouri, and the United States of a whole, as a whole, should be embarrassed, should be disappointed at what happened. From the very little part of the city of Ferguson to the whole country, to the rest, to what we, the rest of the world probably have seen, because I don't, I'm really sure this is, was on the global scale. Anybody who had access to it, anybody who had a chance to just relay the news, the whole world knew of all this. And us as people of the United States of America, the whole country as a whole should be embarrassed for this actions. It's bad enough that the dict that that uh, the guy in charge and I can't remember his full name in North Korea, Kim Jong Un. Yeah, there we go. I remember Kim Jong Un basically criticized the United States. You got Kim Jong Un of all people criticizing the United States. You definitely have done something incredibly wrong. If the guy who has a big militarized dictatorship over his country, who has his own problems, mind you, and has his own control problems, says something is wrong, very likely you have done something wrong, America. Us. Okay, maybe I should said you, we Americans have done something wrong. All of us as a collective group has done something wrong. Black, white, Asian, male, female, young, old. We are a messed up country in this sense that even after the civil rights movement happened in the 60s, racism is still incredibly strong. And I'm not saying that race racism does have 
some role in this. Some role. Is it the main key factor? Probably not. But it is a factor. But it is not the only factor. Because police brutality is another factor in this. Why did you think it was all okay once an unarmed teen, after, even after he went after your gun, he was a far enough distance away from you, why did you view him enough as a threat for him to, for you to still shoot your gun at him, to kill him? Why was that still okay? Even after a long dis, even though there was, you know, X amount of distance, an X ranged anywhere from 30 to 100 feet. No, 150, sorry. And I think the final count put it as 100 feet, 150 feet. But why was that okay? Ferguson, last night, left a few messages for the rest of, for everybody else who was even slightly outside of Ferguson said basically a police can get by with anything they can get by with what pretty much could be considered murder except he didn't have the malicious intent but it can get by with killing whoever especially black Americans since you know racial profiling still exists that's why a third of African American males end up in jail and the next lowest thing down is 7% with white males. It also says that things don't go your way and your voice is not heard. It is all okay to trash a town, trash a city, even if it's your own. And three, we need to fix all this. We need to fix this mess. And we need to fix it in a nonviolent way. We need, we need a better solution. We need to fix this so there's no more of this violence. There's no more of this destruction. Because that ripple effect, if it keeps going, will be heavy hardy hitting in the closer cities to it, like Florissant, Ferguson, Berkeley, and anything else that neighbors that. Because people who will get mo who will move out of Ferguson will, and they'll move to a, one of those neighboring cities, or go to St. Charles if they can. Which, since this is Ferguson, I doubt they'll be able to get as far as St. Charles. But it's painful, and I really wish that we don't have another night like last night. I hope we find a good solution to this. I hope that those that have their heads on straight follow the words of the, the, the parents of Michael Brown and they wanted they want to pass a law for the whole United States to make it so that all cops have a camera on them. But it's funny, Darren Wilson, as far as I remember, didn't even have a didn't even have a dash cam. But we'll see what happens. I hope I don't have to make another video about Ferguson tomorrow. Just explaining how much frustration, anger, and pain and sorrow I'm in. This is face cam with Jen. Hopefully the next video will just be another Pokemon Showdown video. I really hope it's another Pokemon Showdown video. I hope it's a long string of Pokemon Showdown videos before we have another one of these serious talk face camps. I'll see you later.